Ooh, what is up guys, of course, welcome back to another VPL Wi-Fi battle in of course the quarterfinals versus the beta BHMs or Madjunk who is actually a teammate for uh, the Odin and Odin's Angels that we were actually playing in the same team um, before playoffs so it's really unfortunate that we face each other um, really was hoping that we all was making it to the semifinals since we actually all made it through the um, eight part final but we finished that in quarter it is unfortunate mainly because i like i said i don't want to necessarily knock out a friend and um, since we're both from sweden that kind of enforces you know really the um, uh, the patriot in you to you know who is the best swede basically now my opponent's team here is skamri nido king runiclis skalinchla snorlax serena wish watching embo mega redactyl and meowstick mail kind of kind of stuck my tongue there while i was saying it so from the get-go, the Pokemon I cannot predict here is definitely like his left side. Uh, Skarmory, the King, Reuniclis, Galvanishin, and Snorlax. I definitely believe they all can possibly make it. And for the last Pokemon, you know, Mega Aerodactyl is super viable versus me, so you can either be that. And the few Pokemon I can see switched it in and out, I guess, is that probably that he couldn't bring Galvanishin or Reuniclis for M or anything like that. Uh, possibly Serena is also an option, but as a whole, I feel that I can maneuver around this team rather well. I can definitely play offensively here. Um, biggest threat for me is Mega Redactyl, but can't necessarily outspeed. But that's pretty much about it. So with that said, here is the matchup we got. So yeah, a rather stellar and close prediction, I would say. Serena is making it. Skarmory didn't make it, which I felt at first was really, really tough. Uh, mainly because my team here is maneuver actively with the Skarmory mind to pivot and build momentum out of. So not seeing it, yeah, it's kind of shitty. That's actually kind of shitty. Now my team here, um, there were a few Pokemon that was debating. The one, the one definitely was trying to fit was Glisco, which in the end didn't make it, and it was forced to be put in a defensive role. And uh, many of his Pokemon can carry Ice type moves. So it is very easy to KO, so in the end of the day, I decided against it. The other set was actually a Scarf Tauros. Scarf Tauros actually does a massive amount of damage, but Skarmory is an issue there. So initially I decided that, you know, since he has Skarmory, it would be really tough for me of actually bringing it. And well, it would have been nice here because we don't see Skarmory. With that said though, we should be very, very capable of dealing with this team in general. And uh, we have a Tapu Koku modest set with a Tapium C or Tapium C to be able to punish a switch in, which is definitely going to be either Reunitless or Snorlax, and uh, to be able with a series of um, Nature Madness and, uh, or a Lowland Guardian, basically, uh, to be able to, with together with Thunderbolt, to KO each of them. Uh, Jelly Sand, Mono Attacking Skull Set with Taunt and Wakai Berry, together with Will-O-Wisp and uh, Recover. Probably my only dedicated switch in to Aerodactyl. Uh, I'm also speed enough to speed a defensive Zarina, which means that Zarina possibly can't um, tear teardrop me before actually Willow Wisp it. So that's really, really good. Pidgeot, Fast Now, Fast Speed, Eventual, also Hurricane, uh, Heat Wave, Defog, and U Turn. I was debating Tailwind, but eventually decided against it because it would be kind of hard to pull off depending on the matchup. And since we don't see Skarmory, I do believe that was a good call. Um, Delphox, Scarf variant, out able to outspeed a Scarfed. Uh, timid in Nido King if he decides to bring that. He has 10 to bring Scarf Nido King usually, so I decided to actually take that with Psychic, Flamethrower, uh, or me Fire Blast, uh, Shadow Ball, and Trick. Uh, Alolan Muck with Assault Vest, uh, heavily physically offensive with um, Pursuit, Knockoff, Poison Jab, and Fire Blast. Fire Blast clearly for the Skarmory. And Breloom, of course, now with a Life Orb set with Thunder Punch, Bullet Seed, Mac Punch, and Spore. So, uh, Mac Punch here is basically to get Aerodactyl into a range where uh, Delphox can KO with a Psychic, basically. I'd be, I need around 40% on Aerodactyl, and I should be fine to sweep with my Delphox. So, initially, that's really is all that I'm processing, and of course, try to get Ninja King out. Now, from the matchup here, it looks like what he could be leading with is with either Galvantula or his Zarina. So, I felt that my safest um, Pokemon to lead off with was Tabu Koku. Um, Worst case scenario, we started with Mega Aerodactyl, but if so, I can probably punish it really early. And yeah, without that, that said, I'm basically going to see how this match go. Carl is a tough player. This was actually a 40-minute battle, even though it only was 21 turns. So yeah, that'll do no about it. 
So from the get-go, my opponent leads off with Nidor King, and this is not good, mainly because, as I stated before, we know he tend to run Scarf, which means that I'm gonna switch out, and I'm gonna actually bring in my Alolan Muck, basically trying to take the upcoming Sludge Wave or Ice Beam. Worst case scenario, goes to Earth Power, and if it's a Scarf set, it should do, at best, 50%. Uh, and also sorry for the frame rate here, I had a little bit of an issue with actually recording. Uh, so it goes for Earth Power and it does a little bit over what I thought it was. So this is definitely modest scarfed and that's okay. But at the same time I can clearly take not I can't take another Earth Power, so I need to go to Mega Pidgeot because I'm floating bitch, which means that I am free now to go for a hurricane. He doesn't switch in well to a hurricane, and I know that. So I'm just going to go for it straight on at it. It's bringing frantic to Aerodactyl. I was like, oh god, yes. This is this is good. We get some big chunk of damage on the Mega Aerodactyl. And that's going to be very, very important. Because this could initially mean that we can force him out eventually. And with, of course, Delphox in mind, should be able to actually kill him with upcoming hits. Now, Hurricane just actually not as much as I hoped for. I actually found out here that that was probably a bit of it on the low side, actually. But we still get the damage that is needed, and we are in a pretty decent spot. As I can bring in Necromedusa, which should be very capable of a wall in this Pokemon. Now, it should be said, Stone Edge could do uh, at best uh, 15, really, no, oh, not 50, 49% at best. So, we're always going to be in a position where he can't do it, Kiyomi. Uh, as it goes for Ice Fang, clearly that doesn't necessarily hurt me too much. And I can retaliate, of course, with a will o -Wisp. I should probably go for a Scald, the more I think about it, as it brings the Black Widow, uh, which is the Galvantula. I don't have a proper switch for the Galvantula, and I do miss out the will o here, but don't worry about that, that's actually quite alright. As I can stay in here, and Thunder shouldn't do more than at best 50% on me, and I should be able to get some initial damage on it, and impossible Sash set. As it does way more and also gets me paralyzed, which means that I can't have Speed Serene anymore. Uh, but the reason it did so much was because he's Specs. So it did way more than I thought it would. And I actually don't have a switch in for a Specs Thunderbolt. So even though I could bring in Breloom, I don't want that thing paralyzed either. And even at that, Thunder still does around 50%, so at best there, I'm kind of free fall with Breloom no matter what. So sadly, I have to actually lose Jellicent here. And I mean sadly, because as I stated, it was my dedicated switch in, and it would have been real nice trying to actually recover against Snorlax or Zerina, but, or Reuniclus for that matter, but with that paralyzation, that is not an option anymore. As I can bring in Rainbrand, I figured it was a better overall switching because that means I can maneuver around. Thunderbolt didn't easily KO, and I don't predict him to switch into Nis Nino King. As he stays in, and we get to go for Thunderbolt. Reason here is I don't want to switch in Mega Pidgeot. Um, Pidgeot could definitely have done some damage, but I'm also baiting in Snorlax, which I wanted to bait in with Tabu Koku instead. Sadly, he brings in the Frantic instead, and. Um, I don't have an Zella switch in here, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna go for either a Stone Edge or an Earthquake. So Breloom is my switch in here, and it should be able to capitalize on anything as he goes for Earthquake. And Magpunch actually is a role to kill him at this range, since it's around 60, and that's about when Breloom's soul would lie for my mind. So I decided to go for that, uh, completely forgetting about uh, the Zarina's ability. Had I thought about it for just a few seconds, I would probably realize that that was a bad option. Because uh, Queen's Majesty clearly kicks in. Now, I'm pretty sure he's going to U-turn, so I'm just going to go for Bullet Seed. I need the damage here. I don't have a proper switch in for a possible U-turn. While Mega Pidgeot could have been that, the uh, issue with that is that Nido King is always going to be the switch in there. I'd rather lose Breloom, as we get some really good damage here on this arena. Sadly, we only get two of those Seed Bombs or Bullet Seed. And that, you know, that's just great. That's exactly what you want as um, Cold Purple comes in. And um, predicting a Sludge Wave, though, I, I decided to go for a Mac Punch anyway uh, because I don't want any more damage on my Alolan Mux since I actually got a heavy heavy damage and I can't switch it in on the Reuniclus later. So we sack off the Breloom here. And we're looking kind of rough here. We actually do. But uh, since we know he locked himself into Ice Beam, I know that I can go to my Delph Fox, force him out, and baiting, of course, the monster that is Snorlax. And with that, hopefully I can double switch into Tabu Koku and 
and go for that um, Alolan Guardian C move as a switching ring rod gonna kick in the electric terrain. <laughs> what? <laughs> and he is actually gonna switch out and he go in to switch to Snorlax. I think, ah, oh, this is this is sweet. This is what we need. Climb into my web as he actually stays in here and we gonna activate the Alolan Guardian C move and push him down for the 75%. Then the reason this is so important is because this means that Delphox is now in a capable area where it actually could sweep. Because 25% on Snorlax means that he can't take a Fire Blast nor Psychic depending on his set. Uh, but since we've seen Dream On, we know that it's definitely possible that he would be very... I actually no idea what the set is. What I'm trying to say is that I hope it's not an Assault Vest set. As we see Curse, I'm like, yes! You're dead! It's over! Snorlax is dead! Now, I was hoping he went. Oh, he should have gone for an earthquake. He definitely should have gone for an earthquake there. Uh, we get a massive amount for this. We didn't see leftovers. And this is still okay. Because we know that he's a specially defensive variant at best. Psyche has a 32% chance, or 32% to a max special defense um, Snorlax. So I am fine. As he's switching Core Turtle here, Turtle Purple, as I go for Thunderbolt. Being kind of predictable here, but really I couldn't do anything else. As now I'm bringing Sludge Wave to actually kick in, uh, I definitely don't see him go for an Earth Power. As a switching Lumin, he actually go for the Ice Beam. And this is even better because we did nothing, nothing on the Delphox. And I could very well now sweep because, well, he does have Reuniclus still, sure. But Reuniclus can't deal with my Lola Muck. So with that said, he actually switched into Dream On. And the uh, Psycho gonna knock him out. I actually had a crit there, but trust me, it is not important. I am mod as bitch, which means it's gonna die. And he actually brings in frantic care. I'm thinking, oh yes, he don't he doesn't believe that I'm scarfed. We are going to knock this son of a bitch out. It is all good in the world. We're doing this so well. But no. Something something went terribly wrong. And what I mean by that is that we actually lose right there and then. I find out later that the roll was not as good in my favor as I really thought it were. I had a 58% chance of knocking him out, which means it was a roll and it was a very, very, it was a small roll in my favor, but basically came down to a 50 50. And, and by the way, Mega Pigeons versus Aerodactyl means that you lose. I mean, no guard, thanks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was banging on Stone Age, just kind of realizing halfway through that, yeah, that that's not going to happen uh, with no guard in mind. But yeah, we definitely lose here, and uh, we lose, I you believe, like 3 0 or something like that, or it's even 4 0 actually. And it's only it's a 21 turn battle, but as I said, we battled for 40 minutes. There were a lot of predictions and a lot of thought processes between every move that was actually paid for. But sadly, I do not come out of top. And as I stated here, it was a roll, and had that roll gone in my favor, which I definitely believe it should have, I would have won this game because he would not have been able to deal with Del Fox combination with a Lola Muck. And it is unfortunate that I lose because I do believe that I was doing the right place there in the end, but the game just kind of decided against me and did not do what I wanted, and I lose too well. I roll. That said, though. I mean, I can only blame the game so much. I really have to give credit to Carl also. I, I definitely believe his team was a lot tougher without the Skarmory. Um, I didn't predict anything like this, and I do believe with that in mind that I had the wrong team versus what I was facing. Even though in the end, I do get maneuverability to, you know, wrap the game, I still lose because of that role. And uh, I really want to say this. I was super salty and very annoyed after this battle. I wasn't annoyed at Carl won. I was actually fairly happy that Carl won because if anyone gonna beat me, I'd rather have it be in my friend or somebody in my team to, you know, keep the torch up for the Odins. That's definitely not it, but I was really frustrated um, actually about this the way I lost. It, it, it's kind of different to ex it, or hard to explain, but what I'm trying to say is that I, I, re I liked that Carl won, but hated that I lost. But I didn't mind losing to Carl, but the way I lost was really frustrating because it felt like it was decided for me instead of a series of play that Carl made. Uh, if you guys kind of get me right there. I'm really trying to <laughs> explain myself. I, I think you guys get it. Um, but yeah, 
One thing that didn't bother me was, of course, it didn't bring Skarmory. Yeah, bringing Tauros would have been kind of epic. It, it, it would have made wonders here. Uh, and also, I didn't have any good switching here to the combination of Galvantula and the King. And that punished me early in the game, and definitely Earth Power uh, on Alolan Muck that early in the game. It could definitely have swept into the Pidgeot directly, predicting either no Sludge Wave or anything like that. But he didn't have Sludge Wave either, so that's kind of more kicking it in the, you know, between the groin. That uh, there, was, there were some attacks there was missing, but I fell for it. And Reloom didn't do anything to this team. Um, I don't know what I was thinking about by bringing it. I really, really thought it would have been a great asset here, but in the end of the day, it wasn't, and that sucks. Uh, that said, though, I mean, I can only like blame the situation so much, but I really wish Carl all the best here in the upcoming matches. He only has the semi-finals and, of course, the possible finals in the end. Uh, I'm going to try to upload those games, even though I'm not active in them. I really want to showcase how this um, playoff goes, but with that said, um, I gotta do like a few afterthoughts about my team itself. I'm not gonna make a bigger video about it because we are knocked out now. We we stopped at what is the top top eight basically. That's that's okay. Um, I I think my team here that I had was not in my cup of tea, uh, and I'm saying this with like a lot of respect too, in in some extent. But I, I was definitely feeling that I had a rough time with my speed tiers to kind of build a team around it. I like Alola Muck though. I really, really like Alola Muck, but it didn't work well in this team. And uh, I think it would have been better off with a more bulkier team or more offensive team. I kind of feel I got some middle ground series of Pokemon and it, it did kind of punish me. Now, my MVP here is definitely the Alpha Fox. It has been working wonders for me. Uh, it's very underrated. There's so much damage. It's uh, it's, a, it's a very super practical Pokemon. So I'm very glad I actually got the chance to use that, and it works. I, I do believe that's the important part. It, it works well, and I'm glad it's working well. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, I, I felt I felt good here. Um, I, I felt this was a decent series of uh, events, and you know I didn't came up to my usual caliber, but at the same time. Uh, I didn't kind of expect me to either. Things have been kind of rough, um, you know, personal life and job and all. So this league kind of got pushed aside, even though it's my own league, which definitely is not good. So in, in some fashions, I'm, I'm kind of glad I got, got knocked out because that means I can focus on the next season instead. And, uh, you know, we're, we're coming back with the Valhalla Pokemon League, no doubt. But first, we're going to make sure that, of course, my guys here get the semi and finals done. So with that said, guys, as always, thank you so much for, of course, watching these series of BPL Battle. And Carlos Oscar, good luck with the semifinals. Make sure you win this all. I mean, if you're going to knock me out, at least win it all, right? So yeah, guys, thank you, of course, so much for watching. And, well, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.